GettingPositiveKarmaNow.com presents Bhagavad Gita for All Lectures by Nalan K. Narula Recorded in front of a live audience Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Last time we had completed chapter 11 and today we will start on chapter 12 which is devotional service. So at the end of this 11th chapter which had to deal with the universal form Krishna is giving instruction to Arjun, giving his opinion that how can uh, how can one see this form of Krishna or attain to that form and Krishna has told him that it is through transcendental eyes only not by studying the Vedas, not by Jnana Yoga, not by undergoing serious penances, not by charity, not by worship, but only by undivided devotional service, Krishna says, can I be understood as I am, standing here in front of you and can be seen directly, and only in this way can you understand my mysterious nature and come to me, in other words. And Finally, he says, one who is engaged in my unalloyed, pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of previous activities and from mental speculation, in other words, from jnana and karma and all that goes with it. One who is nirvaira, one who is uh, enemy to none, friendly to all, uh, such a person comes to me. That was the 11th chapter, the concluding part of it. And today's chapter 12, we start with text number 1, chapter on devotional service. So this is a very, very key chapter. A lot of understandings will be churned here, what you might know in terms of your practical experience and what you have understood about healing and about Krishna so far. So Arjun Vacha Arjun says Evam Satata Yukta Yi Bhaktas Dwam Pari Upasate Ye Chapi Aksharam of Yaktam Tesham Ke Yoga Vittama. So Arjun is asking that those who are of those who are engaged in your devotional service. Ye bhaktatvam pariyopasate who properly worship you, those, or then again, that which is aksharam avyayaktam, uh, avyaktam, uh, aksharam avyaktam, that which is manifested, unmanifested, that which is unmanifested and beyond the senses, uh, those who worship the impersonal Brahma, uh, which is superior which is more perfect. So, now in chapter 6 and 8 and earlier also, Krishna has explained to Arjun that devotional service is the best. So why is Arjun asking this question? So, one can inquire as to why again he is asking this. What does he mean by this? What is the motivation for him to ask this kind of a question? So, there are a number of things that become clear from from this. Which is that if you go back to chapter 8 and look at text 21 and 22, Krishna is telling Arjun, Avyakto akshara iti uktas. He's used these same words which Arjuna is now quoting here, avyakta and akshara. The unmanifested, 
the inexhaustible, impersonal. So Krishna says that is the supreme abode is called the unmanifested and inexhaustible and that is the supreme destination. Parmam gatim yam prapya na nivartante the person does not come back once he attains to that supreme abode. And he also goes on to say purusha sa para partha bhaktya labhyastu ananya yashanteha sthani bhutani yena sarvam idam tatam that is text 22 of chapter 8 so it says that the supreme person purusha the supreme purusha sa para the supreme person beyond whom none is greater isn't attainable by bhaktya by devotional service so that was chapter 8, text 21 and 22. And now in chapter 12, Arjun is asking, which is more superior? Huh? The aksharam avyayaktam or the bhaktastvam paryupasate. So if Krishna has already made this clear, why is this being asked again? So the reason for that is that the impersonal energy, the Brahma energy is available throughout the universe through Krishna's superior empowered energy, which is uh, Lakshmi Devi. That is the mother energy of the entire universe. So all Brahma energy is actually the mother energy, which we have mentioned earlier also on numerous occasions. And that is the Reiki energy. The Reiki energy is flowing through space, flowing through everything. It is impersonal. There is no personal form to it. It is an energy flow. Superior to that energy flow is the source, the intermediary source, which is Lakshmi. And beyond Lakshmi is the source of Lakshmi, who is Krishna. So Arjuna is asking this question to make it very clear, clear cut understanding. If we worship Brahma, all of us are connected to Brahma as uh, when you get initiated to the spiritual energies. And if we are worshipping that, if we are propitiating that, if we are uh, satisfying those energies and having a conciliatory relationship with them, what happens? So Krishna says you will eventually get moksha, freedom from birth, death, old age and disease. But there are a number of issues here. So which will be taken up, which will be taken up gradually. So the reason that Arjun is asking is because, again, uh, there is, it is to clarify any confusion that people might have that the unmanifest prakriti or the material nature that comes from uh, the aksharam, which is also the uh, unmanifested form. Krishna says that the material nature is coming from his separated superior energy. So the eight elements of the separated superior energy are the five uh, Mahatattva gross elements, that is space, air, uh, fire, water and earth. And then the three other subtle elements, mind, intelligence and false ego. So under the control of the superior nature which is of three qualities triguna the triguni maya that is the mode of goodness the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance <coughs> sattva gun tamogun rajogun so that is what is keeping the living entity in illusion and that is his uh, nature which is inferior to the nature of the soul the soul is also uh, considered to be unmanifested superior energy because you cannot see the soul it is hidden uh, that is also there and it is that energy which is coming from Krishna which is the superior energy but how to know it is the question and uh, Arjuna is asking Krishna that how what kind of uh, approach is more superior 
the devotional service approach or worshipping of the impersonal Brahma or worshipping of the Brahminical energy. Now, Brahminical energy may be inferior to the Supreme, but it is not without its purposes and uses because even in the Vedic tradition, one receives a Brahminical initiation and that is an initiation into this uh, uh, life force energy through which you will be able to connect to Krishna. So that is only the first stage. So Brahmin initiation is first part. So as a healer you have initiated into you have been initiated into that energy. Second part is to actually know what is what, what is superior. So typically we use the Reiki energies to uh, heal our karma. Krishna says very clearly uh, that uh, uh, elsewhere that when using this energy you can be free of uh, binding consequence karma. So Krishna replies to Arjun now in text number two. Mai avishya mana ye maam nitya yukta upasate shraddhaya paraya upeta te so, mai avesya mano ye maam means that fixing, avesya fixing your mind on me. Me means not the impersonal energy, me means his personal form as depicted by his presence on the battlefield, that form of Krishna, which he finally showed to Arjun, this two handed form. Maya Vishya Mano Ye Maam Nitya Yukta Upaste Shraddhaya Parayopat Parayopitas Temi Yuktaatma Mata. So, a person who has engaged his mind on me, on my form, always engaged Nitya Yukta, worshipping me with faith. Paraya means transcendental, Upeta, engaging in transcendental activity. Temi Yuktaatma Pope. Mata. I consider that the most perfect in yoga with me. Yuktatma means linked. Yuktatma linked in perfection to Krishna. So the personal form is now recommended in answer to Arjun's question. Then he goes on to say, Lord Krishna goes on to say in text 3 and 4, Yetu Aksharam Aniriddeshyam of yaktam pari upasati sarvatra gam achintayam cha kutastham achalam dhruvam saniyam yendriya gramam sarvatra sam buddhaya tre prapnuvanti maam eva sarvabhut hite rata so yetu aksharam aniridishyam Avyaktam Pariupasate. A person who engages in activity to worship this unmanifested energy, Brahma energy, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all pervading, inconceivable, fixed and immovable. So these are all descriptions of the universal life force. These are all descriptions of the Brahminical energies the impersonal conception of uh, Brahma, the, of the absolute truth. And then he goes on to say that by controlling your various senses, Indriya, grama, Gramam, Sarvatra, Samabuddhya, equally disposed to everybody, all living entities. This is in continuation of what Krishna said earlier, that one should be nirvair, should not be inimical to anyone. Such a person comes to me. So even here that is repeated and such a person will ultimately achieve to me, uh, come to me because the person is Sarvabhuta Hite Rata, because he is engaged in welfare of all. So these are the terms and conditions you can say. Now when you use the healing energy of Reiki, you are doing precisely this. You are not only liberating yourself from binding consequence karma using the impersonal Brahma energy, 
you are also liberating others from their karmic debts towards you. So you are engaged in the welfare activity of all. The highest welfare activity, of course, is to give this knowledge and information to the person who is properly placed to receive it, who is, uh, you can say, receptive to it. So this, again, uh, is, is very, very important understanding. Krishna goes on to say in text number 5, this is now what is happening with the impersonal Brahma or the impersonal uh, engage, person who is engaging in the welfare of all entities using this energy. However, there is a rider to this. There is a caution and that caution comes up as in all things you are told this is good for you, this is what you should do, but here is a caution. So what is the caution here? So in text number 5, Krishna says, Kleshu adhiktaras tesham avyayakta sakta chetasam avyakta hi gatir dukham devadhiv bhir avapyate. So, Klesha adhiktara. It is greatly troublesome to those who are attached to the unmanifested and the impersonal form the impersonal energies. For those who's, who are mentally attached to the unmanifested impersonal aspect of the Supreme Divine, advancement is very difficult. They do not stick with it. They cannot. Very difficult. Their progress is difficult. Gati Dukham, very troublesome uh, progress. Why? Because Deva Bhi Deha avadibhir, that because they are in the bodily form. So it is difficult to conceive of the impersonal. How do you conceive of something that is got no form? It, it, it is a problem. So it is difficult to worship that. However, if you understand that this is coming from uh, the mother energy, uh, coming from the Lakshmi mother aspect of the universe, it makes it easier. But here he's talking directly about the impersonal energy. So if one is worshipping the impersonal form, uh, it is of great trouble. It is of great problem. Uh, those people are called uh, Gyanis or Gyan Yogis and so on. And so therefore, what is a better path? The better path is that you should move on to uh, a different aspect and that is covered in text 6 and 7. Krishna goes on to tell Arjun, Yetu sarvani karmani mai sanyasasya mat para anenanyeva yogena maam dhyananta upasati tesam aham samudharta mrityu sansara sagrat Bhavami na chirat partha mai avishita chitasam. So, one who dedicates Sarvani Karmani, all his activities unto me, giving it all up to me, matpara being attached to me, ananyena without deviation, unalloyed, without admixture of anything else, eva yogena by practicing this uh, yoga uh, mat yoga my being linked to me properly maam dhyananta by meditating on me upasate worships me those people aham samudharta i deliver those people from mrityu sansar sagara from this ocean of birth and death and material existence bhavami na chirat partha Mai avesita chetasam. So, Bhavami, do become uh, Parth, O Arjun, uh, son of Pritha. Become fixed on me, and for such a person, I quickly liberate them from the ocean of uh, birth and death. So, that is the explicit instruction to Arjun. I think we will pause here because a lot of things have been
covered. Uh, we could continue, but we will wait uh, here. Recap. Yes. So, basically, Arjun's question was that what is more superior? What is recommended? What is more perfect? Yoga with the Maha. The most perfect linking. Both are linking to Krishna, but which is more perfect? Either the uh, personal worship of you or that worship of the impersonal Brahma. So Krishna says that when you worship the impersonal Brahma, you become freed. You become freed of uh, material bindings, no doubt. Hmm? Those who worship with faith and they will be liberated. But one who is engaged in my mind with uh, serving me, he is the most perfect. Uh, so, unequivocal answer that he whose mind is fixed on my personal form, as I am appearing here and engaging in worshipping me with great faith is considered to be most perfect. So that is the answer to Arjun's question, which is more perfect or most perfect, the impersonal aspect, worship or the personal. So Krishna says clearly, it's the personal form. Then he goes on to say that, however, but those who are worshipping fully in the proper way, the unmanifested which lies beyond the perception of the senses, the uh, universal life force energy, the impersonal conception of Brahma, uh, by controlling the senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such a person who is engaged in the welfare of all will at the end also come to me. So, but this path is very troublesome, Krishna says. That making progress in this discipline is very difficult for those who are in the bodily form because they cannot conceive of the impersonal. How do you conceive of something which has no form? It is very difficult. It becomes speculative. It becomes Jnana Yoga, which is, Krishna has earlier said, get away from Karam Yoga as well as from Jnana Yoga. You must be free from your previous impressions, he has said. So, all those things taken into consideration, you need to come to the point of understanding that Krishna is the Supreme and worshipping Him directly is the way that you can uh, come to Him and it is the recommended path. So, one who gives up all his activities to Krishna, offering them to Krishna. In other words, it is Krishna's will that has to be uh, uh, agreed upon by anyone who does anything. It is His will after you do the healing energy work, whatever you are supposed to do, you work with the Brahmanical energy and you leave the results to Krishna. So it is not even Reiki actually who is deciding your final results, it is Krishna. So if you take that one step forward that the Reiki is the Lakshmi energy or the Shri energy of Krishna and be behind her sanctioning things is Krishna himself, the Janardhan aspect, the Hari aspect, uh, practicing Bhakti Yoga. So one of the ways that you can practice, it, practice Bhakti Yoga is to chant the Maha Mantra, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So that way you call up the form of Krishna, even in your mind, whether you saw it as a deity form or you saw it as a painting or you saw it in any other way as a stone sculpture or anything like that. Because Krishna also manifests in material nature. These are all expansions of his material aspect as shown in the universal form. So such a person who is meditating on Krishna and fixed his mind upon me, such a person is liberated also and this is preferable. So this is text 6 and 7. So is this clear or are there any questions? Hmm? So then we can... So, yes. Uh, so then Radharani is... Radharani is the source of, of the Lakshmi energies. Yeah. She is not Krishna's heart potency because yes, I think yes. of him. I always <coughs> see him in the 
Yes, yes. 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 Radha Rani. Radha Rani is uh, the heart potency of Krishna, and uh, the KQ force is the crown chakra energy of Krishna. So you have, you can call it the Krishna quotient force. It's the same thing because only He can liberate us. Hmm? So I'll take this one shloka further since this is clear now. Uh, Krishna says in text eight, "Mai eva mana adhatsva, mai buddhim niveshya, niveshyasyasi mai eva ata urdhvam na sanshaya." So just fix your mind on me, Krishna says. Fix your intelligence on me. Then. You will always be living in me, without a doubt. Nivas is just see me. You will be living. Nivas means to live. So, what is this? This is two of the ele- of the three subtle elements that we talked about as being part of material nature: the mind and the intelligence. The false ego has been left out of the picture here, because the false ego cannot fix, actually. On Krishna, because he is the false ego is thinking he is superior. So just fix your mind on me, and engage your intelligence in me. So the mind and intelligence, the man and buddhi aspect, connect to me. Krishna says, then you will live with me, live in me, without a doubt. So if you have your mind and intelligence fixed on Krishna by chanting his name, by remembering his form, and by Doing the welfare activity for every living entity, which means you will channel the healing energy to everybody. That is enough. You chant the Maha Mantra. You understand where the source of your power is ultimately coming from, and you do the welfare activities for all living entities. You are not inimical to anyone. You are fulfilling these terms and conditions of being. Directly connected to Krishna and worshiping Him directly in unalloyed devotional service. So all you need to do is to take the step up. This is the Reiki energy. The source is Krishna, and I am doing this as He is directing here in Chapter Twelve. This conversation has taken place. Krishna has given the instructions. So all you need to do is to make that one slight jump. And to move on to understanding that the energy comes, and it is actually Krishna who has to be uh, meditated upon. So this is why you find that people who do not have this understanding, who may be healers, who may be connected to the Brahmanical energy, they will not continue beyond a certain point. They either remain stuck at that point or they drop off. Because they do not have this understanding, the impersonal aspect of Krishna is very difficult to uh, connect to. Because we are in the bodily form, it is much easier to connect to Krishna in his bodily form because we have a reference. So where we have references available, uh, it is easier for us to make that connection. So it is. You know the discussion always has been which is more superior, the avgun or the nir the nirgun or the sagun aspect, the form or the formless aspect of Krishna. So Krishna is making it clear: the formless is something that is a radiant energy that is coming from me, and I am the source of that. It's like the sun is the source of the sunshine. The sunshine is not superior to the sun. So the sun is always superior. So that has to be clearly understood. However, what does the sunshine do? It permits us to live. It gives us what is needed for life. So, in a similar way, the universal life force energy is a radiance that is coming from the divine that permits us to live. That it, that is its purpose and job. But that's not the end point. And we need to go beyond that sunshine aspect and connect to the source, the powerhouse, which is the sun, who is Krishna. So that is who we need to connect with. 
So we can use these methodologies. It is not forbidden. Krishna says that even these people ultimately will come to me provided they fulfill these conditions that I have just mentioned. And But this is a very difficult task because you cannot conceive of the inconceivable. <laughs> that is a contradiction right in the beginning. So that which you cannot conceive of, how will you conceive it? It is beyond conception. It can also be applied for Krishna. Krishna is also not conceivable because you cannot contain what he is in your memory or your mind or your understanding. So the only way to get the benefit is that you connect to his form, you do everything for him without deviation and you fix your mind and intelligence on him. He is not saying don't do the Reiki, do not uh, or give up the Brahminical energy <coughs> connection. He does not say that. So it's not that you give up the Brahminical energy connection, but you have that. It is necessary for you to come to this point of understanding, but connect with who is the source of all of this. That is me, Krishna, is what he is saying. So if you do that, he says, just fix your mind and intelligence on me uh, and you will live in me always without a doubt. Any questions? Yes. So if somebody, like if, there, if a person thinks that, well, I will just chant, I will just chant the Mahamantra. Yes. So that is, the, that is where I ultimately have to go. Yeah, but you still ultimately have to get a connection to the Brahmanical energy but for the, the empowerment. But they may not be able, they may be uh, in that consciousness, but they won't be able to leave because of the binding karma which is there. That is why you need the Brahminical connection. The Brahminical connection is required, but you need to go beyond that. If you look at it in every uh, religious, spiritual, uh, university, whether it is worshipping, whether you are in the Brahma Sampradaya, whether you are in the Rudra Sampradaya or the Shri or Lakshmi Sampradaya or the Kumar Sampradaya, all need the Brahmanical connection. Because Krishna says, this is my empowered energy. Mind and intelligence is also coming from that separated empowered energy. Krishna says that you are under illusion with this separated energy of mind of the three material modes of nature which are again coming from the Brahminical energy source which is Lakshmidhi. The Devi Shaktis. Basically these are all Devi Shaktis. The mother form, the uh, universal life force, these are all mother energies. You use them to find the father. Which is why it is important that people do their Reiki first and then come to the KQ force, not the other way around. We have instituted that change for this reason only. That you need to first get connected to the Brahmanical energies and then utilize that power or the empowerment that is available to find the father energy. Mother is the only one who can tell you who the father is. Is it not? Who will tell the child who is the father? Mother is the only source. Now you have DNA testing also, but besides that, who is the source? Mother. So this is the conclusion of Krishna telling Arjun that how it is to be, uh, how one should proceed forward. So if this is very clear, would you like to go forward more or this is enough for today? No, no, no. To go, forward. go forward. Okay, one more shlok. Text number nine. Atha chitam samam dhatam na sakshno si mai sthiram abhyasa yogena tato maam ichhaputam dharanjaya Atha chitam samadhatam Fix your mind, therefore, upon me. And if you cannot do that, 
if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the sthiram abhyasa yogena tata maam ichha aptum dhananjaya then follow the regulated principles of the rules and regulations of bhakti yoga and in this way you will develop a desire to come to me so if you are following the healing principles if you are Uh, doing your healing practices regularly gradually you will come to this point is made available for you that you uh, develop a desire to come to me so it's important to understand that unless the person is ready for this he is not going to get to it he is not going to get to that point where he is open to connecting with krishna so as one advances in one's healing one inquires further what is beyond this what is the source and so on and so forth and then one can actually get the desire to attain to me and then you can do the work which is you are working in that krishna consciousness way to come to me so when you are offering when you are sending healing to the food you are sending healing to all your activities uh, you are invoking the reiki energy somewhere you need to understand that this is actually krishna's liberation energies that are coming and i am doing it for krishna because even reiki even lakshmi is a servant of krishna so the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of krishna is very happy if you serve krishna so but to do that you need to serve the servant of the servant of the servant which is which is all the way down to the spiritual master and then the uh, others who are also similarly connected the other devotees who are also so connected so that is part of the bhakti yoga process so serving the spiritual master eventually is going up the line and you also have your independent connection in the sense that you are connected to the brahmanical energies of reiki which are originating ultimately from krishna and you are using that energy to uh, be liberated one point i want to make very clear in lakshmi devi can't directly liberate you so when we say that we are being liberated by the universal life force energy it is the krishna empowerment that is making you liberated not lakshmi energy. so question may come up you know this these are lakshmi energies or the mother energies uh, is that not enough no because the source of the empowerment of that also is krishna so only krishna has the capacity to liberate so he is using lakshmi ji as his agent so this is very very clear lakshmi ji is an agent of krishna to help liberate you the only thing is that now you need to acknowledge the supreme source of where this is all coming from okay so we will stop here at text <laughs> this continues but i will stop here today Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one more. Hmm. One more. Okay. So text number ten. So text nine is that if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulated regulative principles of bhakti yoga, and that way you will develop a desire for me to come to me. Then in text ten, abhyase api asamartha asi. मत कर्म परम भव मत अर्थम अपि कर्माणि कुर्वान सिद्धिम अवाप्स्यसि सो अभ्यास 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 अपि असमर्थो असि इफ यू आर अनसक्सेसफुल ओके व्हाट हैपेंस इफ यू कैन नॉट प्रैक्टिस द रेगुलेटिव प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ भक्ति योग देन जस्ट ट्राई एंड वर्क फॉर मी बिकॉज़ बाय वर्किंग फॉर मी यू विल कम टू मी eventually to the stage of perfection so mat karma parama bhava mat artham so this you are doing already as a reiki person you are working for him indirectly or directly you cannot do anything else 
if you are not able to en- engage in the regulated principles of bhakti yoga then you do this then you will come to the perfect stage hmm? then text 11 atha etad api asakta asi kartum mat yogam ashrita sarva karma phal tyagam tata kuru yata atmavan so athetad api asakto asi now you can't even work in this suppose you can't even work in this consciousness then just act by giving up all the results of your work uh, renounce the results of your work tyagam hmm? sarva karma phal tyagam tata kuru yata atmavan and be self situated now when you are doing your healing that is what you are supposed to be doing that you are not attached to the results hmm? so this is covered in your five principles of reiki that you are not attached to the result you are working only because you have the uh, empowerment to do so the result is never in your hand we understand that when we say divine will be done or reiki's will will be done or uh, that you become detached from the consequences of what you are asking for so that is preparation for this stage that at least you give up the results of all your work and uh, be self situated self means the soul self in the spiritual self so this is a very uh, very very important and to clarify this further in text 12 krishna says shreyo hi gyanam abhyasaj gyanat dhyanam vishishyate dhyanat karma phal karma phal tyagas tyaga shantir anantaram so shreya hi gyanam abhyasat knowledge you know if you cannot take to this practice then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge but better than knowledge dhyanam vishishyate dhyan or meditation is better and better than meditation is karma phal tyag renunciation of the results of fruitive actions and by such renunciation tyagat shanti anantaram you will get <coughs> tremendous peace of mind so this is working in this way so he has given you what are the options so if you look at it if you study these uh, shlokas uh, up to 12 i would suggest when you go home you study these 12 shlokas again in this light and you will find that you are hitting some parts of these somewhere so automatically in the process but now you are understanding how this fits into the scheme of liberation of being emancipated from the material uh, ocean of birth and death which krishna has mentioned earlier so we will conclude here at text 12 that renunciation of the fruits of action is the best minimum platform that you can engage in and that you come when you leave everything to divine will reiki's will be done let it be done i only channel the healing and i do what is needed at my end to achieve the result whatever it is that i am supposed to uh, do or Uh, act on and whether the result comes in the way that i want it or don't want it or expect it regardless of that i continue on my path so if there are any questions we can consider is prabh sajan uh, is asking how did healers connect to divine in bracket krishna 5000 years ago when reference point of krishna was not there 5000 years ago krishna was very much here 7000 years ago he was there in different form 
uh, Vishnu, Vishnu form. But at that time the teaching is also about Krishna. The Vishnu, the form of Vishnu and the form of Krishna are always existing. Either as a depiction from the material universal form aspect, the uh, various materials that are available in in the, in uh, the world around us or as described in the Vedas. So that has always been there. The knowledge is for now. This instruction is being given for people who have do not have that capacity as they had six, seven thousand years back. It is for the people now and for all times as well. So this form was available. It's not that people came to know who Krishna was when he appeared. People already knew about him. But they didn't understand this is the same Krishna. That is the difference. And when he displayed his universal form, all the people in the higher planet saw who he was. That has been described in the previous chapter. Anything else? Okay, so this is very clear. So we will conclude here at text number 12 of chapter 12. So I would advise you to study this chapter 12 again when you reach home. 1 to 12 at least you study that. So refresh your understanding. Okay. Om Namo Bhagwate Vasudevaya. 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 Okay, so we'll log off from the internet now. Thank you everyone for attending. You've been listening to Nalan Kainarula on gettingpositivekarmanow.com. dot com.